All right, so it is 5.30 and I'm calling this meeting to order. It's a special meeting of the select board. Um, first a reminder that meetings of the select board are meetings conducted in public. They are not meetings of the public. Nonetheless, members of the public shall be afforded reasonable opportunities to express opinions about matters conducted by the select board so long as order is maintained. The rules for public comment are at the conclusion of a select board discussion on an agenda item before any action is taken, there may be 10 minutes afforded by to public comment. Comments made by the public must be addressed to the chair, to the select board as a whole, and not to any individual members of the select board or members of the public. Members of the Where's public there? must be, huh? There's music. There Somebody is music. I'm hearing something. So, is that you, Charlie? Your coat, maybe? <clears throat> It's the Christmas. Uh, I'm getting I am getting to this to the cell phones. Uh, <laughs> no, it's something else. Oh jeez. I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on. Okay. I'm gonna turn it off. That's a good idea. Uh, no, it's no, it's something else. No. no. It's, it's off. It's off? Okay. It was nice. Sorry. That's okay. Um if, <laughs> if, Okay. If a member of the public has already spoken on a topic, they shall be recognized again until others have first been given the opportunity to comment. Order and decorum shall be maintained throughout the meeting. Personal, impertinent, threatening, or profane remarks will not be tolerated, and neither will music. But those who are participating via Zoom, Certainly not. <laughs> please note that chat is not an appropriate avenue for public comment. All public comments must be made verbally when acknowledged by the chair. Please silence all cell phones. And a reminder to all that this meeting is being recorded and may appear on the internet. So, are there any adjustments to the order of the agenda? I do notice that there isn't public comment on here on items not on the agenda um, because it's, it's a special meeting. It's a special meeting. Um, so, um, if anybody's here to talk about something that's not on the agenda, I'm sorry, um, but you can't. Um, so, so the next piece is: it, were there any orders, uh, any adjustments? I have none. Okay. Um, anybody have anything on the select board? Okay. Select board new business, discussion and action. Uh, the first one is to authorize the treasurer, treasurer to sign payroll and payables. Is that in lieu of a meeting next week? If we want? Yeah, so I put it on there just as a safety net. Okay. Because if one of these folks don't come next week, I need you authorization need okay. to sign checks. Okay. And I would just want to be safe. Okay. So we we'll still have a meeting next week? Yeah. Okay. I'm planning um, on it. But just in case, uh, can I hear a motion to authorize the treasurer to sign payroll and payables? So moved. Is there a second? Second. It's moved and seconded to authorize the treasurer to sign payroll and payables. Um, is there any discussion on the board? Is there any discussion in the room? Any discussion online? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Next is VLCT training, town meeting warning, and model articles training. That's a training That's on January 10th, 2024, from 10 to 11. This is on here to ask us if any of us want to go. Yes, if you want to go, you have to what go online. What day is that? It's a, it's um, a Wednesday, of course. Yep. Um, there, is another, there is another training, February 7th. 9 to noon, it's town meeting tune-up. Um, it, it, February 7th is probably also a Wednesday? It is a Wednesday, yes. Okay. Is that a psych board day? Um, I don't know. I, I don't mind taking it, it's just I get squeezed for time at work on psych board days. Mm -hmm. So. Well, February 7th, according to this, is on a Tuesday. Oh. So, it's a Tuesday, not Wednesday. Okay. Does anybody else want to take this? Um, I would recommend course. that if you can get on VLCT to read yeah. the literature. I tried to print it, but it okay. doesn't print, right? All right. So, so do we need I'll to check like, it out? You know? If we're I don't have my we phone. would register and then they would send the town an invoice. Is that how that works? That's how okay. it works. And we are passive members, so make sure you click passive and okay. not the LCT. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, any other discussion on the support on that? The training opportunities? 
I mean, they're, they're, they are very good trainings. Um, in general, the LCT does great training, so, um, and we can always use a town meeting tune-up and uh, training for that. So, um, are there any comments online? Are there any comments in the room? All right, moving right along to Select Board Unfinished Discussion, Town Meeting Preparation. Uh, the first one is the COVID Act 1H42, Use of Australian Ballot Update. That's uh, John, who's online. Hi. Can you hear me all right? Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, so this is kind of more of just a, an FYI provision. Um, as you may or may not know, the COVID rules extend through the 1st of July of this year. And what that means is, you may recall during COVID, we decided everything by Australian ballot and had a six hour Zoom meeting, um, informational meeting prior to election day. That is still an option through July. We did not do it last year. And I think there's a bunch of good reasons not to do it this year. Um, I thought town meeting last year was, was a big success. Um, we can also switch the day um, you may recall that Westminster moved their meeting to May and held it outside. Um, that's still an option if, if that's um, something the select board wants to do. Okay, what's the feeling? Of okay. The next thing is venue. Um, assuming oh, yeah. that we have an in-person town meeting, um, we've requested the use of the Putney Central School gym like we did last year. Um, the meeting will start at 10 p.m. as usual. 10 a.m. Um, How about 10 a.m. instead? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry? <laughs> Not 10 p.m., 10 a.m. 10 a.m. 10 p.m. Yeah, is past my bedtime. <laughs> um, yeah, 10 p.m. we're having it at the Gleanery. <laughs> <laughs> just, just kidding. Uh, just a reminder that only registered voters will be allowed inside the row so that we restrict the discussion and votes to registered voters in Putney from the floor. There's always a section for guests. Um, you know, typically we have, you know, perhaps senators who are not Putney residents, state senators who are not Putney residents want to address the meeting and they are allowed to do that. Um, on town meeting day, we'll essentially have three different elections. There's the floor vote where we'll decide budget issues. Um, I'm seeing a little bit of interest from the Group C um, social service agencies. Um, so we might have, I think I've been contacted by four or five of the agencies, so we might have that as an issue. Um, then there's the local election, which I'm going to talk about more in just a minute. And then it's also the presidential primary. Um, a reminder that the school district annual meeting takes place later in, in March. It's the third Tuesday in March, and that's usually held at the, at, at the high school. Um, any questions on that? Um, I, does anybody have any questions? Does anybody in the public have questions in the room? Anybody online? Okay. Uh, it doesn't look like it. Okay. So there's six local officers that will need to be decided by Australian ballot during the local election part. And we've always done that here in Putney by Australian ballot. Um, we'll start with um, select board members. There's a three-year term up and a two-year term up. Um, the three-year term is currently held by the chair. The two-year term is held by um, Charlie Robichuk. Um, Kurt Lynch um, needs to run for re-election or someone needs to petition to replace him. Um, there's also two cemetery commission terms. Um, Nan, Nan Brennan is up for a three year, and I don't know if you recall, no one ran for a three year term last year, um, but Greg Wilson graciously agreed to be appointed for one year. That will expire at town meeting. Um, I have not heard from Greg whether he intends to run for the two years, I would think not. Um, he's, he's dedicated many, many years on the Cemetery Commission and, and has probably had enough. Um, we might be able to convince him to volunteer for one more year. Um, and then also, um, the moderator is a one-year position, um, and typically Meg Mott runs unopposed. Um, but, uh, you know, if, if you're intending to run for any of those offices, um, stop by the office or email me at clerk 
at putneybt.org and I can help you prepare your petition. Um, right now, you need 1% of the registered checklist, which is 1,976 people. So that roughly works out to 19 or 20 people to get your 1%. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's it's 19.35, I think. So I don't know how you get three-fifths of a voter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, John, you said two select board members, two cemetery commissioners, one moderator, and who's, what's the sixth? The Lister. The Lister. 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 Okay. And we're in the middle of a town-wide reappraisal, so hopefully Kirk will take his experience and, and run for re-election. Um, that's, a, that's a major, major project. Uh, so petitions must be returned by my office not later than 5 p.m. on Monday, January 29th. That's a Monday, 5 p.m. Um, in addition, uh, Ann Beekman came in last week or earlier this week to pick up her petition to run for um, her director seat on the Wyndham Southeast School District. And I believe there are a few other towns that will have candidates. Um, you know, Dumberson, Brattleboro, Guilford, they'll probably also have candidates that will be on our Australian ballot in addition to Anne. Okay, the next thing that I wanted to touch base with is petitions. If you have an issue that you think the voters need to sign, that the voters need, the town and or the voters need to approve, there's two different ways to do it. The first way is you can convince the select board that it's something that we should do. The select board always has the authority to adopt things on their own motion. It, failing that, what you will need is 5% of the voter checklist. Again, the checklist is 1,976 people, which roughly works out to 100 people or so. And I would caution anybody who's um, soliciting petition signatures, both for elected office and for issues, is there's always a number of people on petitions who think they live in Putney and think they are registered to vote, but are not. So, you know, if you need 20, I would get at least 25, probably 30, um, just to make sure that you're not gathering Westminster West people or Dumberston people. As you know, um, the Putney Code 05346 covers all of Putney, mm -hmm. a good part of Westminster and half of Dumberston. And some of these people might have Putney mailing addresses. Uh, but actually are registered in a different town. Um, so the the deadline for the 5% issue um, petitions are January 18th, 2024. Um, and I forgot, I'm sorry, I forgot to check um, what day of the week that is. Um, I want to say it's a Thursday. But yeah, it's a don't, Thursday. Don't, don't, quote, don't quote me on that. Um, and then we need to finalize the warning, which would be candidates and petitions not later than February 4th. So that, that deadline is, is coming up fairly quickly. Um, and the warning will be posted and then we'll send the ballots to the printer. Um, early absentee voting on the, um, the local issues will start February 14th, Valentine's Day. Um, and then the last thing I, I just really want to stress this because it's always an issue with polls on election day. As you know, in Vermont, you are not required to declare your political party when you register to vote. There is one exception to that. When you vote in the presidential primary, the national committees have insisted that Vermont gather that information. So when you come to vote in the presidential primary, and it, it sounds like well, there are going to be six Democratic candidates and six Republican candidates on the ballot, according to um, the Secretary of State's office on the radio this morning, um, you must request either a Republican or a Democratic ballot. Um, and, <coughs> excuse me. And I'm sure people will forget <coughs> between now and then. But we'll, <coughs> excuse me, we'll have signs, but every chance I get, I'm gonna say, 
don't forget you have to declare your political party when you register in the presidential primary. Any questions on that? Um, yeah, so once you've done that, are you then a registered uh, member of that party or can you switch back right away? Well, we, we don't keep track, well, we keep track of what ballot you take, mm -hmm. but you, you don't, we don't change your voter registration. Okay. You know, you're still just a voter. Um, it, it's, it's a bit bizarre. Um, so I, I get many years ago in Ohio, 25 years ago, I was registered in a, in a, in a political party and I still get emails from them. <laughs> all these, I mean, yeah. it's just absolutely bizarre. You know, I haven't had to register in a political party for 15, 20 years. Uh, but Ohio remembers that when I lived there, I was a member of a political party and I still get emails from them. So okay. but I, I don't, I don't think unless, unless the political parties do it through the secretary of state's office in Montpelier, I've never had a request from, you know, Democrats to say who took the Democrat ballot or, or Republicans who took the Republican ballot, um, for Putney. So okay if that is what it is okay and all right final thing. okay go ahead so, yeah so i guess um so i grew up in new hampshire and uh, in new hampshire uh you could be an independent and then at the primary you would register your preference you would get that ballot and then once you had cast it you could go back to the um table and say i'm re-registering as an independent if you wanted to so you were like briefly part of that party um, so, but it, it seems like you could be you could be either party and take either ballot in Vermont. Yes. Okay. And it, it won't change anything in your voter registration okay. for the you know when when we do the August primary you'll get all through the August general election state office primary in August you'll get three ballots, you'll vote one and return the other two unvoted, and the town clerk will never know which one you voted and which one you, you returned. That's just how Vermont decided to do it. it, it this is the only election, it's only every four years, um, and that's why I'm kind of stressing it because it tends to get questions because it only happens every four years. Okay, does anybody on the board have any questions on any of, any of this? Uh, Robin, you have your hand up, or Mary? Mary has her hand up. Hi. Um, you know, you can also, uh, if you're against a Republican candidate, register a Republican, even though you lean Democratic, you know, <laughs> which I've done in some elections, so that the Republican candidate wouldn't get the... Uh, uh, okay, yeah. Robin, get, Robin gets it, but um, you can do whatever you want. I, mean, <laughs> I understand that too, Robin. Yeah, Mary. Yeah. Or Mary, sorry. Well, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm really kidding, but uh, I actually have gone once. I have to admit. <laughs> but you don't know. You don't keep track of it. Sure. Yeah, that, that's not a, a metric that I measure. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. All right, thank you. Does anybody else have any questions or comments on the general election? I mean the uh, primary, presidential primary process? Any questions in the room? Not questions that you can answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Questions are beyond our purview. Yes. yes. Uh, and Matt, if I have one last issue. Okay, go. Uh, we really need to schedule a, a meeting of the Board of Civil Authority, which includes all of you guys. So I'm just kind of tipping you off the, the select board. I'm going to ask you to come to an extra meeting in January. There's, there's two things that we really need to do. The first is um, a point, you know, Rachel is new in my office. We had always appointed Kim as an assistant um, election official. Um, Kim is now in the treasurer's office, Rachel's in the clerk's office, so let's get her appointed there so that there's no question that she's an election official on election days as, as assistant clerk. Um, there are also a few other little housekeeping details that, that we might want to address, and, and I'll put that together. Um, as we get ready for the meeting. The more important one is we're in the middle of a townwide reappraisal. And, you know, thank heavens we have not had any property tax appeals since, I think we've had one since I was clerk, um, Great River Hydro. Um, and that was back in 2019, maybe. 
um, but we're in the middle of a town-wide reappraisal, and everybody's going to get a new valuation, and I, I anticipate that we're going to have property tax appeals, and I just want to make sure that the Board of Civil Authority um, and the clerk's office is on the same page as we, as we proceed with these um, tax appeals. And Vermont League of Cities and Towns has a nice set of model rules for, you know, model rules of procedure. You know, first the listers are gonna go, and then the grievance gonna go, and then the listers get to go again, and then the BCA gets to ask questions, and then, you know, we have a, a point of viewing committee. Um, it's, it's a fairly onerous process um, because each tax appeal requires two meetings at the BCA, and I just wanna make sure that we get set up to do those as efficiently as possible, especially in in anticipation of you know high numbers when we have um, many tax appeals. I mean, hopefully we don't, but you never know, and we, we need to start planning now to be ready so that we don't um, mess up our, our June and July. Okay. So it's coming. Yeah, good to know. Um, okay. Anybody have any questions on that process? Uh, any questions, uh, Meg? Uh, yeah, I just have a, a question which has to do with when you might be setting out the actual articles, and I'd love to be part of that process, just to be thinking through the, the sequence. Um, and then my specific question for but Jonathan, you were talking about there's now uh, Group C social service agencies. Are we anticipating that, that, would, that those uh, presentations would happen when we get to the point in the budget around uh, social service benefits? I'm sorry, you know, funds from the town? Yeah, so um, we, we revamped our social agency policy. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that we did was we, we ended up eliminating Group C mm -hmm. as a category. Mm -hmm. um, and then we met last week, last week um, to kind of go over the ones that had been in Group C to see if any of them qualified for Group B. And we ended up deciding that um, we were just going to take them out in their entirety and have them petition if they felt that they were really, a, had a good strong argument for being in Group B. So that was like, I think maybe 10 11. agencies, 11, 11 agencies, and it sounds like um, at least five of them may have a good argument for being in Group B. Um, so that will be five, potentially five to 10 separate warrant articles. Uh, petitioned warrant articles. Got it. And so that'll be on the warrant. That'll be on the warrant. Each one. Yes. Okay. Yes. Good to know. Yep. Um, so you. that's where that came from. John? Uh, John? And, and just a reminder that the articles must be completed and published and worn by February 4th. Um, and I'm not sure what the select board meeting before that is, um, but that's, Meg, that's when that hard work will be done mm -hmm. and it'll be something that we'll all do together, I imagine. So um, stay, stay tuned. And Meg, you know how to get a hold of me if you have any questions at all, please just reach out and I'll help you if I can. Great, thank you. And Meg, I did, I did also bring up to the board that um, I wanted to invite you to a meeting, maybe while we're doing right. the warrants as well, so that we can have a conversation about town meeting etiquette and your role and our role so that we're all clear when we get onto the, um, up onto the high table and have a nice smooth meeting. <laughs> so um, that should happen uh, soonish, right? Yeah. Um, um, so January tenth would be the next. So, uh, yeah, so January tenth. Yeah. Yeah, because we have regular meeting next week. So yeah. January tenth, and then the twenty fourth is when we have to have the articles. All right. So probably have it draft warrants by warning by the tenth. I'm not sure that's going to happen. But the warning is due February 4th. Yeah, but yeah. When, when are the articles due? Um, 24 sounds like the closest select board meeting to that day. Right. So that yeah. would be the logical time to complete it. Yeah. Or vote on them. You're going right. to have to adopt, adopt them. Well, it would be nice to see something on the 10th. Although we could have an extra meeting, so. We could do that. Just Let's plan on that. We're having so much fun today, so well, yeah, let's have more. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we could do that. Um, are, is there other comments about uh, anything that Jonathan's brought up? 
on town meeting in the room, online on the select board. Um, anything else, John? No. Okay. So we don't have to, uh, it's, uh, going back to um, Australian ballot, that's something if we wanted to do it, we would take action on it. But if we don't want to do it, then we can just do well, we don't to, need to do anything. We don't have to do anything. So if we do nothing, then we would have a town meeting at the school starting at 10 a.m. Right. On the 5th. On the 5th. Right. Okay. All right. Good yep. to know. All right. Um, so where are we now? Um, we are at the appoint. Wait. Yes. Mm -hmm. We are at the appointed boards, committees, and commissions. Vacancies. Which, vacancies, which is in your packet. Mm -hmm. So this is just informational for you where Rachel is at. Um, she's contacted all of these people, but she's still waiting for responses, okay? Some have already expressed interest in renewing their reappointment, but there's still work to do on this sheet. Okay. So I, I will keep you posted. Um, I'm thinking, so the appointed vacancies, um, we can go right up until town meeting. And I would like to see like a table at town meeting mm -hmm. with all the vacancies so people know what is available. Okay, don't we usually reappoint after elections? Right. Yeah, it's usually your first. Right first thing meeting. to do. Okay. After you reorganize, yeah. right after the town meeting, extra meeting. Yes. Another special meeting. Um, Karen, I'm looking at this and I'm just trying to understand it. I'm trying to understand it. Um, total seats open. Um, so that there might be an empty, if there's an empty box that doesn't have a number in it, that means not, no. So the vacant or two seats that are vacant, like Conservation Commission. There's already two vacant seats okay. for that commission. Um, the other three people haven't indicated whether or not they want to be reappointed. All right, so anyone that shows renewed on here means they want to be reappointed. Um, but they all have, all of these, except for the Conservation Commission, all of these and the Planning Commission, they all have um, one-year terms. All the advisory committees are one-year terms. That is correct. So all of these people, if they, they will be re, uh, they will either not join again or they will be reappointed, right? Right. Okay. But they have to tell us that they want to be reappointed. That's um, fair. Okay, so in that right-hand column, that's total number of seats open, Vacant, yeah. Um, Those, yeah. We just don't know yet. So if there's a if there's an empty one, one that does not have a number in it currently, we're, it's because we're waiting to hear from people. No. No, I think. I'm, I'm so the vacant I'm vacant is vacant is vacant. We absolutely need a person for that seat. And right, but that's why there's two there because there are two vacant correct. seats. Correct. Right. So correct. go back up to affordable housing, for instance, and mm -hmm. there's no number there. That is correct. So that is the number of members for that committee. Like there are no current, there are okay. no current vacancies right. right now. Okay. Whether or not some of these people may drop off is remains okay. to be seen. Right. But right now, there's no vacancy okay. on the affordable housing committee. Yeah. So is the the number in that far right hand corner going to change as people respond? Possibility. Or is that just the static number of vacancies as of right now? Well, it's static right now. Okay, but not based on people. I guess not. the only person that seems to have said that they do not want to continue on is Robin Ekstrom on the Planning Commission. Right. That's how I take that. Okay. So his term is up and he's, 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 he's retired okay. off of the commission. Okay. I would 
Yes. I would like to propose, Karen, that as we know that there is a vacancy, yeah. on that we do our PR push through Facebook, um, uh, whatever other systems we're, <laughs> we, we're Instagram. using, Instagram, Instagram. Um, Front Porch Forum, whatever we, and, and our, our website, that we do a plug that is specific to that um, committee that says, you know, Conservation Commission has an opening. We don't have to say how many, we don't have to say, but we know that there's an opening there and, and that we give people information about what the Conservation Commission is mm -hmm. and how, what to do if they're interested. And that we time those so that every week we're putting out. We, yeah, there's information on the website, but we will continue the push. Um, my, my point, I think, is that I think it's really important to push by committee, by commission, by opening, so that people can have some real good information or, and a visual or so that we're really doing a push for a committee and one. not just mm -hmm. the town needs people to fill these <laughs> positions. And no, I get it. I so, get it. Yeah. I, I, you know, yeah. yeah, we can. And uh, tables. Tables at on. Town meeting. Oh, right, and I'm happy to do, I'm happy to coordinate the table at town meeting. I'm right, you did it last year. Yeah. yeah. But I just think that being really clear, because as somebody in the community, I didn't know what these things were. What the heck is the, you know, what are these committees? Um, we know because it's in our lingo, but a lot of other people mm -hmm. really don't know what they are. So I would just encourage that we give as much information. Oh, to there's people. literature. There's been literature out here on that buffet, right? So I mean, yeah, I just think it's and it's not working a hundred. You know, we're still having holes, and so I just think the more we can do, and the more we can plug it towards, are you interested in, you know, environmental issues? You know, consider joining this particular committee, yeah. right? Um, I think I just think we might get a little more traction. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, I think you're right. Okay. Does anybody else have any comments about uh, vacancies on the uh, various committees? Anybody in the room? Anybody online? Okay. Moving on to uh, long-term debt report. So that's in your packet as well. Um, this shows. Um, our long-term debt, basically um, money that we borrow to either purchase equipment. Um, on this report is the four bond payments. So the gravel pit, the water, the sewer, and the fire station. Um, it also shows the maturity date for each bond or loan. So I can say that we're in pretty good shape. So everything in the fire department will be paid off in fiscal year 27. And then the highway department, the last payment on one of two trucks would be in fiscal year 26. As you folks know, maybe the public doesn't know, but um, we've moved away from borrowing money to buy equipment for the highway department and um, we're going to continue that um, to purchase and it appears that um, we may have no purchases for at least two years so we'll be building that the fund the, the reserve capital fund. reserves the fund. fund yeah so that too I contribute to Brian Harlow for having um, a conservative um, spending with his operating budget. Yeah, it looks like if I'm reading this right, most of the most of these are going to fall off either next year or the year after. Is that right? Um, Except so for the long-term bonds, like the gravel pit. No. No, those 
So the gravel pit. Right, gravel pit and the maturity, water system. Now the maturity yeah. date on that is 2044. Right. Um, the water system is 2041. Yep. And then the sewer is 2037. Right. So. But we have the 2020 Western Star, which has a 2024 maturity date on it. Yep. So that's next year, right? Yes. Or two. I guess we yep. have two payments. Okay. Oh, because yep. fiscal year 24. Yes. So if you see where yep. this is payment <laughs> FY25. Yep. yep. So that's the year we're going to be in. So you're right, because that 2020 right. Western Star will fall off. Okay. Um, so the last the last thing that will be on here, fiscal at the end of next fiscal year, will be the fire station, the gravel pit, the water system, and the sewer system. That will be on here. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yep. Cool. Yep. I'm but, with you now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there eventually. <laughs> okay. All right. Cool. Reverse osmosis. <laughs> Um, but that's just, you know, this will show up in our town report, right. but um, yeah, again, I think we're doing okay. Um, but. Okay. Does anybody have any questions about the long-term debt report on the SEC board? Anybody in the room? I don't know if you even have it in front of you. It's a lot of numbers. Um, anybody online? Okay. Um, Moving on to the capital plan report, um, if any. I, that is not in your okay. um, packet. All right. Um, that, we need a grant to actually do a capital plan, but I will pull one together with what I know. Um, you know, obviously, with capital planning, you're thinking the future mm -hmm. and it can be just about anything um, and the way it's supposed to work is so when you're looking at your budget and you're in a fiscal year the bottom line that you want to like um, for capital whether it's improvements or buying equipment or sidewalks whatever that bottom line should be in your budget to cover those expenses Okay. As a capital improvement, but um, we've never really had one that actually made sense to me. So, okay. and just just so people know, like the city of Barrie never had a capital plan until they got a grant. They hired a consultant and they put one together. And I can tell you, there are major cities that don't have capital plans because I have called town managers and said, can I use your template? And they're like, well, we don't have a capital plan. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so, okay, so we're not alone. Um, no, we're not alone. Okay. And we will make sense of this um, by next year. Okay. Um, All right, then moving on. Does anybody have any comments or questions about the capital plan um, in the room, online? Okay, um, hearing none, so the next one is the new payroll tax for the Vermont Child Care Contribution Tax. Yeah, it's brand new. Yeah. Um, lists are blew up over this. I saw that. <laughs> I didn't even know about it. So um, the deal is it's uh, a child, it's a tax for child care. Right. We'll go to a child care program. Um, it's 0.44%, and if the employer, employer, excuse me, paid it all, the total bottom line would be $3,574.94. Okay. Now, the employer can elect to pay 0.33%, and then the employee pays 0.11%. So the numbers are right there on the spreadsheet. Um, yeah, so that's um, a little confusing because this is, um, so the total by all of our employees would be $893.74, right? For the employee portion. Right, but that's, that's, every, that's not right. each employee will spend that much. No, no, okay. no, 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 that's okay. a total okay. dollar amount okay. that all employees and how many employees do we have? Um, we have 12. 
But the other thing too, it looks like um, anyone considered as an employee um, would have to pay that. So I don't know what the percentage would be for any one employee. Okay. I'm still trying to understand. Is this something that w we would have to vote on, right? Or to do you it one should, way or the other? Yes. Okay. You should, yes. And if you don't want to do it tonight, you don't have to do it tonight because the general fund is still um, yeah. in the I think I'd like to mull it over a little bit myself. Yeah. Um, I think I know where I stand on this issue, but I'm not entirely certain. Yeah. Can I just reiterate to see if I understand that this new tax, we have to decide whether we're going to pay all of it as a town or whether we're going to pass some of that on to the employees. Correct. Right. Okay. And it would be the employees across the board would pick up that point. One one percent. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Does anybody on the board have questions or comments about the uh, new payroll tax? Anyone online? Swift. I just want to say, as a um, child care administrator, um, really excited for Act seventy six and how it's impacting child cares all over the state and already getting money in the pockets of employees and families in child care um, industry. And it's amazing the impact it's having for these, not very much for individual and for businesses, it's making a huge impact um, on our children. So thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody um, in the room about the child care, the new payroll tax um, and what we should do about it? No opinions? Okay. Um, uh, I have um, an opinion. Okay, go ahead. Uh, who's that? Oh, Daniel. Go ahead. Dan, yeah. I, um, this is the first I've heard of um, a payroll tax. So is this a statewide mandated tax on everybody? Yeah. Oh, well, on employers. So um, so when you get your 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 paycheck, basically, there's a payroll tax that the employers pay, and uh, to some extent, the employee pays. Um, and it's a uh, act. What is it? Act. Do we have act seventy six. Act seventy six that was um, passed this year that um, imposes a a, a tax point forty four percent payroll tax to fund um, child care programs throughout the state. So we don't have a choice in the matter. The choice that we have is whether we as a town are going to pay the full point forty four percent or whether we're going to split it up between the town and the employees. Well, personally, since we can't do anything about it, I don't want any new taxes, but I don't think we can do anything about it. I think the employees should pay a portion because uh, not all employees are from the town, so that, that puts the burden more on the town and puts more money out of our town and, and you have more burden on the, the residents, taxpayers. So I think that, unfortunately, um, the employees should should pay some of the tax but uh, I think we should really try to push back and, and um, not have any new taxes because it's it's getting ridiculous uh, that's all I have to say okay thanks um, yeah as far as uh, state mandates are concerned that's uh, something we would contact our legislatures about because it's not something that the select board has any control over but I, I hear you yeah I understand thanks thank you um, any other comments? Okay, moving on to um, yeah. So let's let's this revisit that. Time. Yeah, let's revisit that. Unless anybody wants to vote on it now, I I'm of two minds on it. Um, I, I hear what Daniel said. I've I've been thinking about that as well. Um, on the other hand, um, you know, it's it's a burden on the employees, and um, you know, maybe that's not fair to them. Um, unless we want to raise their um, their rates it correspondingly in which case I'm not sure we'd be saving any money so I'm, I'm just saying I'm just saying out loud that I've been thinking about this issue and I'm not sure where I'm where I'm gonna land on it so I would I would like some time to think about it so when we say put it 
um, table it for now. When would we bring it up? Next, next, next time week, maybe? when we're not here. Not next week. Yeah. No. Let's do that. <laughs> no, we're only doing more next okay. week. Okay. Yeah. Good, because I actually would like to have a part of that conversation. Okay. And yeah. No, I would so. save that for the entire board. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Dang. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. Let's um, let's think. The, yeah. Let's think about it on okay. the tenth. All right. Um, so the next piece is uh, tax exempt properties and value, which is all right. So uh, in your packet, um, I did a little summary in a nutshell, um, and you have a spreadsheet that. I, color coded for you folks. Um, the important page on the spreadsheet is the very last page. I'm gonna walk walk you through this a little bit. I'm glad everyone's sitting down. <laughs> um, so the grand list value currently is two million four hundred eight well no it's more than that because it's you get a like so two four eight three six three nine, okay? Mm -hmm. And there's a couple zeros on the end of that. So total parcels in Putney is one thousand one hundred and eighty nine parcels. Total taxable parcels in Putney is one thousand twelve parcels. Taxable homesteads in Putney is six hundred thirty six parcels. Taxable non-homestead, 376. As people know, non-homestead pays a lower rate. Mm -hmm. And non-homestead may mean second homes, it may mean commercial and or rental. So, looking at those numbers, um, and as we dive into this a little bit deeper, the value, now we're going to get into the exemptions, okay? My favorite subject. So, I know, you can relate to this. <laughs> and let me know if I explain it properly. Um, the value of voted exemptions, $2,915, no. $2,915,237. So the total voted taxable exemption is $2,812. No. No, which number are you on? Sorry. Yeah. I'm right here on oh, this right here. Oh, okay. oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Not on the spreadsheet. Sorry. It's okay. These are voted exemptions. So these right. are these are um, these are ones that have been voted by the town. Yes. Not the listers, but the town. By the town. Okay. Okay. Um, let me get my... Yeah, so like Yellow Barn, the Gun Club. Okay. Um, the Community Center, right? So the total voted taxable exemption ends up being $28,000. $126, okay? So just keep that in mind. And in Putney, so like one penny equates to about $25,000, okay? Then the Vermont law exemptions, which by law we have to um, exempt, right? That ends up being, and these are your education, that number total is $123,319,200, which is a very big number. So when, when I, so the total number exempt is 1,189,783. And that's based on our current tax rate, which is 0.9, six four eight okay and that's all on the spreadsheet and I know you're like screaming over there I'm not, I'm not screaming <laughs> I know it's this is a hard thing to understand when you first 
try to get your head into it. It takes a while. So just... I'm with you. I know. I'm, I'm glad. You. I'm glad you're with me. Um, so, again, Vermont law exemptions total is 1,189,783. Special exemptions ends up being total taxable exemption is 21,978. You add all those numbers up from any type of property tax revenue exemption, it is 1,239,800. And eighty-seven dollars. Okay. Our budget, folks. Okay. Just for this year that we're in, is one million six hundred sixty-eight thousand two hundred twenty-six dollars. Of that, we had to raise one million. $1,304,351. So that $1 million, $239,000 is almost as much as we had to raise for this year's operating mm -hmm. budget. So there is an imbalance here. <laughs> and what happens is that tax burden falls on the taxpayers. It's very hard to create property tax revenue in this town when we've got that much that we have to make up. Yep. And I struggle with this year after year and people tell me our taxes can't go up. Well, folks, I've been level funding our budgets for the last five years. The only thing that's been going up is benefits, um, salaries, insurances, mm -hmm. and that's stuff that most of it's not in our control. Right. But we need to really look at this. I, honestly, there's not much we can do here. The only thing that we could do as a town is stop the voted exemptions. We, if we said, you know what, I'm sorry, but we can't, we don't want that anymore, we, we could do that. Well, but the rest of these are statutory. We, yeah, there's the nothing ones, we can do about this other than to talk to our legislature right. about it. And, um, I understand and it's not, and it's that not just Putney, it's the state of, all the towns in the state of Vermont right. have, I mean, Brattle Row is struggling with this issue too. Yeah. Um, and you know, every time you have a, a, say, the Wyndham County Sheriff's Office decides to buy a $800,000 assessed building and take it off the tax rolls. That's, right. I mean, there's nothing that's, that's lost revenue. It's, it's a benefit to the community and the community as a whole. And I'm not, you know, a lot of these places are benefits to the community, but they, um, but they are lost revenue to the town. And there's nothing we can really do about that unless we change our structure. Well, I want to add to like, so we just had a brand new, um, solar array project come online mm -hmm. and the value of that is one million forty five thousand nine hundred dollars and you know yeah that's another one we could vote to 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 to, to um well we tried that and we did it, it failed it did because it did okay. fail um i want to say that one of the reasons it failed was because we included the community solar in it um and that that became a problem um, and we may want to write that article again okay. for this year so and that's something the board can consider yeah um, but I look at this year after year and I try to figure out how can we you know create property tax revenue without you know having the community basically pay for it, you know, because you know we there's local meals and rooms. There's the local local tax, you know, the local option tax yes. that we could do now, right? Yeah. Without a charter change, so that might be something else we want to right. consider. Yeah, but um, I do the best I can, and um, 
you know, a lot of these properties too are town owned. Um, yeah. The solar is something we could, you know, revisit. There's not many voted exemptions year after year. No. I mean, and they're and not they that big either. No, they're not that big. Um, I just see. I'm trying to look at uh, the other thing too is um, when people talk about the private schools. Um, even though they have an assessed value on them right now, mm -hmm. if they were ever to sell those campuses, they wouldn't be able to sell them for the value that they're being assessed at right now. They might. <coughs> so, Some of them do. <laughs> you know, and I think about it too, Eileen. I'm like, oh, well, yeah, you know, if you look at that campus, you know, why wouldn't you? Know, someone could do something large with that, you know? It's like, Maybe it is worth that, you know, if we're assessing it at that, you know, but. Well, the townwide reappraisal should, we'll hopefully look at those properties and give them a market value. Well, my hope is, my hope is the grand list is going to grow through this reappraisal, mm -hmm. which ultimately should reduce the tax rate. But um, yeah, I, I'm not going to guarantee that until we see the numbers, but. Um, so this is just a little education in property tax exemptions. Yeah. Did you have a question? Yeah, I do have a question. I, I would like to be clear about what the, the voted exemptions are. I'm kind of looking here and I'm not, it's not. So the ones that are up top, the voted exemptions, what's, why is Comcast cable <coughs> in there? That's what I was wondering. Um, it's a utility, but yeah. I need to question that with, um, with Jordy, yeah, because no, no utility should be in that list. <laughs> well, they are in the list of, of exemptions on the 411. I'm, but I mean, I'm, I'm confused by why that's there. Um, I don't know um, why it's there, but I'll look at that one. Okay, when so we do the voted exemptions, do we specify that they're paying municipal only, or have we, um, have we exempted all of it? No, so some do pay education. Okay. Um, but not all because that's one way to it doesn't doesn't do much yeah. but it does it does equal it out equal it out because the statutory um, exemptions um, we don't get penalized by the state for uh, the educational portion um, for statutory exemptions but if we right. don't if we choose to vote for say yellow barn that they don't pay any tax that gets added into the um, the local agreement I condense this uh, spreadsheet for tonight. Okay. But I do have a full, and it does show you where, you know, who pays education and who pays nothing. Um, yeah. It's another large issue that the state has to tackle, that this and where, where we're funding our education from. Because the, I mean, it's not just it's not just the exemptions. It's the it's the fact that the education portion of our tax bill is so large and keeps growing every year that right. towns are unable to do anything with their municipal. I mean, their the municipal piece is being is being penalized for that because of the education piece. And education is important. I have two kids in the educational system. Love what they're doing, but um, but the way that we're funding this is making it it's not sustainable. Not for taxpayers. No, it's not sustainable for the municipalities either because no. we, we can't we can't no. we can't renovate our town hall no. without grant money. No. So it's it is it is definitely a problem. Um, and again, contact your legislators and um, find a different funding source. But it's hard for people to do that when mm -hmm. they don't understand the process. Yeah, you know? that's true. Or the numbers. Here. I guess I'm talking to us, the select board. Yeah. <laughs> so the exemptions that are not statutory mm -hmm. are the ones are the Comcast Yellow Barn Putty Gun Club. Yep. That them. Yep. Um, the solar places. Yep. And what is Borden Beatrix? 
That that is the old um, parish on Old Depot Road. It's I know it's a person's name and but they're a, they're retired priests that live over there. Clergy people. Didn't that just sell? Mm -hmm. Yeah, didn't I that thought just that didn't that just go yeah, back? Yeah, sold. Yeah. And then it got again. I think. Um, it was old. No, it sold like a year ago or something. Yeah. yeah. Right. And then they applied for yeah, because the church. Fishing. They yeah. they apply for a fly fish yes a charitable pie, a pious charitable public application I call it fly fishing form yeah for reasons that I'm not going to get into <laughs> um, <laughs> just ask any lister um, so um, I think they I think they reapplied for that so they probably should go down for the next grand list we I can, don't know we can talk about that also Jordy will give me the um, yeah okay. oh down here you mean? Um, yeah, I yeah. think I think they went back down there. When you say back down there, what do you mean? <laughs> back down into um, the education, the forest for learning, next stage arts. Right, they do belong cares. down there because the church is down there too. Um, so, what is a, the difference between them up there and those down there? So the voted, like, So okay, anything. So there are okay. There are statutory written into law. Um, such things are right. always and ever exempt. So schools, um, and the state uh, arms of the state, so the county lands, right. uh, town lands, um, county buildings, state buildings, those are all statutorily exempt. And churches. And churches are also, yes. Yes. Um, and then um, there is something called the public pious and charitable law, which um, is actually in the purview of the listers uh, to some extent, where somebody can come in and they can apply to be exempt based on whether they're a public, pious, or charitable organization. So, um, so next stage religious arts. Religious or charitable <coughs> organization. Yes. So they'll come into the Lister's office and the Lister's office will say, yes, next stage, you, are, you serve a public function because you're open mm -hmm. to the public and you serve an indefinite number of people um, and then they become exempt. Um, or the listers can say no, and it goes up through the BCA process, um, and ends up at Supreme Court. Um, <laughs> so, um, so those are ones that are also statutorily exempt in that there's a law that the listers um, that there's an application process, and once they're exempt, they're exempt statutorily because there's a there's a statute okay. on it. Okay. So can you explain to me why the Roman Catholic Church and the next stage is in the same category? Because Roman Catholic Church is a pious organization and next stage is a public organization. And it's the pious they filed, charitable They filed group. their exemption under that statute. So the Roman Catholic dioceses didn't automatically qualify under the religious they, organization? They did, but they have to go through that process. <laughs> Like schools don't necessarily have to go through that process okay. unless it's not clear that they're a school. Okay. So okay. for That's example, yeah, yeah, NECA yeah. applied in, Bra in Brattleboro under the public pious and charitable organization and they said, well, we're exempt because we're a school. Right. And the listeners said, no, we don't think you're a school. <laughs> so, so that was, you know, it was sort of a gray area. Um, so they're, they don't, it's kind of like a catch-all like that. So okay. you're not necessarily, absolutely, definitely a school. You you apply under that exemption, and okay. then if you don't Thank get you. that, then you go to town meeting and you say, well, yeah. I think we should be exempt anyway, which is where why they end where up where the up voted here. exemptions. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That's okay. super helpful. <laughs> right. No, that's super helpful. Does anybody else have any questions about nonprofits? Um, the educational institutions that are educational institutions like. Landmark and Putney School and Greenwood, do they make contributions to the town even though they're not legally obligated to? They do. I they think, do. I mean, the, 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 the Putney School doesn't, yeah, I mean, the, do. not Putney School, the Putney School District, this, the, the public school doesn't. No. The but public, the private schools do. The private schools do. Right. They do um, based on the public safety budget and the uh, it's an agreement that's been long standing and it has to be renegotiated. Yeah. And we'll be looking at that in the spring. They're not required to by law. 
The only the only ones that are required to by law are Vermont state buildings. So the state, if we had any state buildings, we'd get a pilot payment from the state, but we don't, so we don't. And state parks too, but we don't have any state parks either. Um, does the contribution that those institutions are making approach what they would be paying if they were paying taxes? No. How how far how big's the gap? It's very big. Yeah. So it's, they yeah. contribute roughly, I'd say, $60,000. All, all of them together? Yes. Combined? I think so, yeah. Yes. And how much do you think the tax revenue would be on those? It would be $1,090,000. Oh, $680,000. Fletcher. Mm, that's a big gap. Yeah, mm. it is a big gap. Yeah. Yep. Um, just so if you're studying this mm. um, spreadsheet, so on the very right side, in yellow, the bold number, yep. that would be the value. Um, if they were being taxed. The value of the, the assessment or the amount? No, it the, would be the value that would go towards property tax revenue. I gotcha. And that's where the 1145 came from? That is correct. Yeah, okay. So. And that's just the municipal rate. That's not. That's not that's the just educational the, fund. Which that is absolutely correct, Eileen. Is it's just the municipal tax. Yeah. So they're not contributing to the educational taxes either. The state does take that into effect when they create our rate, but it's still it's still a big gap. Anyway, yeah, it's a big fun topic that somebody should just solve. It's a challenging one, and um, so, yeah, I'll just keep trying to think it through. But okay, do we have any other questions or comments on the exempt properties in town and how to solve the revenue stream issue? Um, okay, next is discuss and review of the operating budgets. So I tried to do budget summaries so you might be able to understand the budgets. You're escaping, um, Meg. Yeah, thank you. No Bye. budgets for you. Thank you. Bye. Okay. So as far as the library goes, I'm, I'm comfortable with this budget the way it is. Um, I don't really see anything that's going to change. Okay. Um, where is... So basically, um, their budget's up 5.31%, an increase of $13,442. Um, benefits went up, you know, by almost 10%, and then, you know, the proposed salary increase of 3%. Basically, their budget's been level funded with no extras in it, and um, yeah, that's the appropriation to their budget is going to be, where is it, about $223,516 just from the town operating budget. That's the appropriation. Okay. So again, there's no, that's bare bones right there. Okay, so we have questions on the library budget? Let me try not to sneeze. Uh, are there any comments online? Any comments in the room? Okay, next is the sewer and water. The sewer and water <coughs> is, uh, so I did do um, adjustments on both the sewer and the water. Again, a budget summary for you folks. Um, the budget for sewer 
is up 9.45%, um, basically $29,952.19. Um, I did find like an error from this year, but so. Is that what you meant by FY24 not calculated? Properly? Yes, yep. Okay. It was uh, the contract for Simon's operation. So there's an increase right there of 13000 but it is what it is. And these numbers, yeah, if you look at your budget, you'll see um, what the numbers you represent. I probably should have run them out, but I did not. Um, what do you mean by the state increase is 9%? Um, where are you seeing that? Uh, it's the, it's the 402, 5, 460, 69. That's a, that's a count number, isn't it? 5, 460, 69.00? Yeah. Yeah, so that is, um, Casella. Yeah. Um, for the sludge disposal. So they, um, twice oh, a month. Just, there's a, uh, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, twice a month. Yeah. Um, they suck up the sludge and then they got to transport it. So if the 9% is what the state passes on to the vendor. Oops. And that's how so they that's a fee that the state is um, assessing, assessing to, because yeah. it goes to what a state facility. Yeah. The, okay. Yeah. So then they calculate, you know, through how many accounts they have, and they formulate the increase, and then that gets passed on to us. Yes, but it only went up a penny for us, so it wasn't bad. And it's based on how many <coughs> gallons that they draw out, and it's usually like 7,000. A year? No. A month. A trip. A trip. A trip. So twice a month, so 14, okay. Mm -hmm. so that's wow. where yeah. the, 14, the 1,300 is coming from? Um, 13,000? 13, 13,000, 13, 13, I mean. Yeah. So it's up. So it's always been, over budget anyway uh -huh. and then finally I said I'm gonna call the company and find out what's going on mm. um, and I did and that's gonna be the increase okay. so hopefully we can be conservative because sometimes we only get one trip a month but it depends are they is this sniper is the state fee is that per gallon or is that per trip no I think it's nine percent like just from the state, you know. In general, just yeah. for the service. Right, right. So we could give them more or less and it would be the same. The 9% would be, yes. Okay. Yeah, that won't change. So the other thing too is you have to remember that, you know, Landmark College is two thirds of the user base for um, our water and sewer. Do they pay water and sewer? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, but, when it comes to trips, it depends, you know, so when the college isn't there, we're going to have less trips, you know, so. Okay. It just depends on how many people are using the system, but it, it will fluctuate. And it's usually, um, we're tracking this now, too, in a spreadsheet. Okay. Um, but you can see, um, you know, where it spikes and where it goes down. Okay. You know, which months this happens in. So we'll keep an eye on that. Tim's really good about tracking things on spreadsheets. Good. Right. Same here, questions on the sewer? Online? Sewer questions? That didn't come out right. Um, <laughs> <sorry>. <laughs> Any questions in the room? Okay. All right, uh, so the water budget summary. Kind of the same thing. I'm comfortable with the sewer and um, the water. Uh, as numbers, okay. Yep, I am. All right. Um, I don't see that they're going to change unless I. I'll take time one more time and go through them. When we vote on these um, as uh, warrant articles, um, 
Does, does this get folded into the general fund budget? The water and sewer? Yeah, do we have a separate warrant article for water and sewer, or I don't remember? No, so here's the thing, you know, so if the town doesn't vote on those two because they're user-based, they're totally right. different budgets. Yeah. So those budgets... So they wouldn't be voting on those anyway, right? No. Gotcha. They'll yeah. just be in the book. Okay. But, um, yeah. What I'll do is have you adopt them, though, before... Okay. You know, because you are the water sewer commissioners, so... That's true. We are. Yeah. Um, so, again, the water budget is um, 3.76, slight increase in expenses, um, $6,125. So, uh, that's, like, um, good with that. Um, so, I don't really have any other comments, you know, regarding water and sewer. You know, the depreciation expense, I couldn't wrap my head around that because we were always over budget. Okay. Um, but then it was explained to me. I gave you all notes. So basically, a journal entry gets made at the end of the year once our audit is um, in draft format. And it will offset that over budget. We just don't see it because it's like a liability, you know, for that bond payment. Okay. So don't ask me to go into any further detail because <laughs> it's going to just confuse you all. But um, I'm comfortable with both those okay. budgets. All right, so the general fund, this is draft like number two. And this is the first you've seen of this tonight. I wish I had gotten it out sooner, but I'm, I'm not comfortable with this yet. Um, it needs to be massaged some more. Um, because I'm still playing around with some numbers. Um, I can tell you the numbers that I'm looking at is going to be medical insurance. And I added, so basically right now the way it sits, it's this budget is up 5.19 percent for $86,591.64 which is a large number that's like three cents on a tax rate okay. um, I can say the interest income that we are receiving from our sweep account right now is averaging between $6,500 to $8,000 a month. The interest. The interest. That's nice. So we ultimately could see, you know, a good chunk of money. And we're going to see some of that money in FY23. Okay. Um, I don't know if this is going to stay like that. If it would for about three years, it'd be good. but. Um, so I think we're, we're doing okay right now with that. Um, I added the Planning Commission um, to our budget. You will see, I don't know what page it's on, so let me just look quickly. On page 8, towards the top, you see Planning Commission. I set that up with their own operating budget. Okay. because they're so active right now mm -hmm. and in there you're going to see miscellaneous grant expenses forty nine thousand dollars i offset that in the revenue as well okay so it's pretty much a wash because sometimes you don't know if you're going to get a grant or not right and this is the match okay okay, okay. But what will happen with grants is that we usually um, will see a bigger, well, as we're doing the work, we have to expense the cost to, to do the, the work. But um, in the end, we get the larger piece of the grant, like the 80% or 90%. We get that after. 
So that number in the revenue will offset those expenses. But when we're doing grant work, we as a town usually have to pay the consultants. Right. Um, the municipal planning grant, you cannot request reimbursement until the work is completed. Which so you have to pay out before you get you see the revenue. Yeah, so okay. we have to be careful when we when, when we play that game. Yeah. There's a dangerous game to play, especially when you get into um, you know, a grant that might be a hundred thousand dollars, right? Mm -hmm. And then if we had like an emergency, which we should have about thirty percent of our operating budget in surplus and we're still building that as well so a lot of moving pieces here when it comes to money so, so basically um, uh, so basically um, kind of carved planning commission out of the general fund and just made it its own yes so it's basically more granular it's not like we're adding correct money to the budget um, is it recording okay. clerk stipend um, can you speak to that? Uh, so Sue Copley um, asked that um, we have money for a recording clerk with a stipend. Um, it's, it's hard getting volunteers um, for the planning commission because they're doing so much work. And I don't know if you saw Robin Ekstrom's mm -hmm. um, minutes. Yeah. But they were extensive. Yeah. And good. it takes a lot of time. And um, I think we should be looking at compensating some of these mm -hmm. people. Other towns do it too. I can tell you Westminster pays a recording clerk to do the minutes for select board meetings. I mean, yeah. we have Rachel, so yeah. as an employee, she does get extra hours to do that. Um, but so essentially, that's what we've got to. So yeah, right. I mean, it makes sense to me that yeah, especially the planning commission would have that right. Maybe the maybe when the DRB meets as well, so that those meetings, so that those minutes are consistent. Yeah, that might be an important one too because you're right. Um, you know. Yeah, because you never know when they might have to be held up in court yeah that's right <laughs> um and also isn't that part of the i mean not that we want to be coming on the rec record town but isn't that like part of it to have extensive minutes and recordings of your meetings for drb yeah we have yeah. our yeah they're recorded through the zone yeah <coughs> um anyway um i like i like that addition so, yeah. You know, I don't have any objection. It just was new, so yeah. I feel like we needed to address it. Yeah. yeah. There are new pieces in this budget, folks. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Because I'm trying to accommodate what we're doing here, mm -hmm. and um, it gets hard when everything's lumped into one line item. Yeah. So I'm trying to break it out so it makes more sense. And don't be surprised that this version here will look a little different because I'm, ar I'm already seeing other places where items are just hanging out, they're orphaned all by themselves and they should be grouped in a category. Yeah. And as far as this board goes, the select board, like all the insurances, like the VLCT, passive and all that stuff, that should be under select board, you know, You'll see the audits under the select board now. Okay. Um, there's something else I moved into your category because it just makes sense. But um, okay. I think Robin has it. Yeah, he does. Up. Robin. Uh, yeah. Hi. Uh, thank you. Um, I just had a comment on the idea of paying people to uh, record minutes. Um, I very much appreciate the thought and, and the recognition, um, but I, I, I also recognize that some of the length of those minutes was due to my own, uh, what do you want to call it, instinct to want to tell a story. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I'm a little bit concerned about the what I see as a professionalization of, of all uh, activity in Vermont. And, and, 
uh, we do need to have very high standards, but I, I also regret the loss of citizen involvement that that implies. Uh, if you're paying somebody else to do it for you, I think there's uh, there's a little bit of a remove there, and, and I, uh, for what it's worth, I, I, I actually uh, kind of appreciate the, the value of, of amateur citizen participation in government without pay, uh, being paid. It, it is uh, a duty and a bit of an honor. So uh, thank you for the recognition, but that's my, my thought on that. Okay. Well, thank you. And you do write excellent myth minutes, so. Yes. Um, <laughs> thanks a lot. Thank you for. <laughs> well, you keep doing it if we pay you. Right. <laughs> Um, okay, are there other comments online before we go on? Anything in the room? Okay. Um, in this new budget is, I created a zoning department. Mm -hmm. um, and that is on page, is that It is on page nine, halfway down the page. Oh yeah, there it is. Um, so that department newly created thirty thousand seven hundred dollars. Okay. Um, this entails sixteen hours a week, part time, no benefits, and I believe with the changes that will be coming up, one is going to be needed. You mean the zoning changes? Yeah, the zoning. The town yeah, plan. having okay. a zoning administrator that is strictly dedicated doing. to zoning administration. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, we also did not get the zoning bylaw modernization grant. Right. We did. We did not. We did, not. We did get the housing assessment. Right. Yeah. But, and this is my opinion, and I'm throwing it out there because. As the zoning administrator now, the town manager and finance director, delinquent tax collector, and road commissioner by default. Um, I think if I had to prioritize, the bylaw modernization should have been a priority. Over the housing needs? Yes. Yeah, I'm surprised that... Um, and I'm disappointed. Yeah. Were they coming out of the same pot of money? No, there was two different ones. So the same department, though? Because um, it sounded like they gave us one and not the other. Right. Because there was because there was a there limited were, amount of money. Yes. Um, so. So I'm disappointed. I don't. Um, I will be coming to the board with an ARPA request. For that money, yeah. Yeah, for that money to get the bylaws updated. Because okay. right now we're using bylaws that the law has changed mm -hmm. and I'm piecing things together. Right. And with all of the housing um, discussions that are going on, and I have probably about 12 files on, on the desk mm -hmm. that are in violation because they have created ADUs without a permit. So, um, that's it. Yeah. That's, so, so this, I guess that's something separate, but this, yeah. This department is needed. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully, we can find somebody that's experienced in zoning. Right. Who's willing um, to work for part time. Right. Yeah. But it's not going to be cheap either. No. Because you know, part-time work, people with no benefits. Um, that's the other thing I'm seeing is, you know, people are basically asking for like 27 28 to $30 an hour. Yeah. And if they have experience, the they're going to be, it's going to be higher. Is this something that we could regionalize? Maybe. Maybe come in with Dummerston and Westminster and create a zoning administrator district <laughs> I mean it, yeah well like, the laws all pertain you know there might be some little difference you know between each town but right. yeah we could talk about that 
as a shared service. Yeah. That's a very good idea, a great actually. Idea. Just be good. I mean, it's it's not just. I mean, it's not just us that needs this. Right. Um, I think it's, yeah, all towns are struggling with the housing changes in particular. Yeah. Because the, there are some changes to the law. Yeah. Um. Anyway, just a thought. So that is an, a new increase in the budget. Um, I also added development review board. Um, their costs right now are 2300 but everything, again, was just lumped into this general, like, category, and I'm just like, oh. you know. And, like, the advertising expenses were coming out of the town management budget. Oh, the, like, the posted Yeah, the posted for the notices. legal notices, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that was... We don't pass thing. that cost on to the applicant? No. No, we don't. That's well, something maybe we else. should do that. <laughs> that is something else that has to be done is all of our applications yeah. need to be updated. Our fee structure has to change. Mm -hmm. um, is that something this board needs to take action on, or is that something that you're... That's planning commission. Planning commission. Yeah, so but yeah. if we get there, you know, not that I want to pass costs on to property owners, and I don't well, think, think the fees are pretty low, right? They are low, but there's other, other, like our ordinances for highway access, we don't charge anything right. for that. Yeah. Um, you know, our vendor ordinance is ten dollars, and it it takes a good hour just to get through the paperwork. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, what is ten dollars? <laughs> so yeah. you might as well just give it away. You know. So there's certain or not have it. <laughs> Yeah, or not have it, you yeah. know, but um, something that we're going to have to talk. So that's the planning commission that would come up with that fee structure? Um, for zoning, um, with the help of the zoning administrator, yeah. which I will be involved in that process mm -hmm. when we update bylaws. Okay. And we're, we're going to have to anyway because the new town plan dictates that there's like, you know, wildlife corridor and mm -hmm. there's another new, so. Yep. We have a lot of work ahead of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, and public engagement on updating the zoning bylaws would be very much appreciated. Um, yeah, um, I was gonna say, something that Robin uh, mentioned earlier about the professionalization of town services. And I, I appreciate the nature of the volunteer system that we have had in this state for since its inception, but, um, but there are some very real, I mean, there's these statutes keep coming down and they're increasingly complicated and planning commission members, they have, they have to have a solid understanding of statutes and, and, and planning and people go to masters they go they get their masters in planning mm. so it, it's an actual discipline I mean the same thing with um, road road maintenance it's not it's not you know Sam with the four-wheel drive truck anymore it's it's an actual science um, and you know the listers are the same way um, I think maybe the only board that doesn't necessarily need to know anything is this one <laughs> Um, <laughs> I wouldn't go um, that far. <laughs> um, but I mean, if, as long as there's people that are are you know educated, educate, yeah. yeah. So right. um, so it really does it does. There's a lot of there's a lot of knowledge and training that you need to have just to get onto these to be effective um, on the town plan update or the zoning bylaws. You know, to 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 get them up to snuff and make sure that they're just legal. Right. Um, so. All that is to say that you know I, I, underst I understand why we're spending more money on these things, um, and it's you know and we do need to update the fees so that it's it's reflected on that, it's yeah. reflected with that. Well, anyway. Thank you for that. Sure. With confidence. Fletcher. <laughs> um, just to add to what Karen just said, you know, any time you've adopted a new town plan, you want to sit down and go through your zoning ordinance mm -hmm. and make sure, because the zoning ordinance is what implements the, right. Right. the concepts of the town plan. 
That said, there's also some quirks in Putney's zoning ordinance mm -hmm. that definitely ought to get ironed out, mm -hmm. um, and that have been there for a long time. And the third thing to, to bring up a discussion that happened when the downtown property owners met a couple of weeks ago, um, parking for businesses downtown. Mm -hmm. And your zoning ordinance is a serious problem in regard to that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we tried like crazy to sell the Putney Pizza. One of my clients tried like crazy to buy the Putney Pizza. Right, right. Yeah. And it fell through because of the, the parking. parking. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't, you know, Brattleboro dealt with it by building a multi deck parking garage. I don't see that happening here, but we got to <laughs> think of something. Yeah. There's got to be some way to make it possible. You know, that, that meeting about the downtown, everybody was talking about how do we make a vibrant downtown. Mm -hmm. Well, if, if your downtown is being chewed up and turned into apartments, you're not going to have that. Right. So yeah. it, it really, I think it's, people don't necessarily see the importance of the zoning regulations writ large on the sort of day-to-day -day life of the town, but they're having a serious impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's, they, they are supposed to be informed by the, I mean, the town plan is supposed to inform the zoning um, bylaws and the town plan is supposed to be the plan for the town, right? What we envision the town to look like. So it is that should be, they should, work in tandem. They should they should achieve the result that we're looking for, theoretically. <laughs> right. Yeah. And there's training that goes along with that too, you know? Yep. <clears throat> um are there, <laughs> are there yeah, other right. comments time. <laughs> online? <clears throat> okay. So the next time you see this budget and it'll be a little bit different. But, um, okay. I just that was on the to, general fund? Alright. Yeah. Um, you do not have the highway fund. Okay, I was going to say. Um, I need to spend some time on that and I need to uh, spend some time with Brian um, trying to get that in place. So. As people know, Brian Harlow will be um, departing his position around May 1st. Mm -hmm. um, I've been doing some research, but we'll see. I'm not quite sure what it looks like right now. Um, right now I'm playing with numbers in his budget, okay. just for employees. Yeah. Um, Possibly training, I guess, maybe. Well, there's going to be training, yeah. and um, <clears throat> I need to sit down and really try to figure this out. Okay. Um, yeah, I just can't really talk about it right now until I really dive into it. That's mm -hmm. fine. Yeah, that was, I, yeah, that was the most in flux, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other thing, too, I just want to mention now on record is when we get to town meeting and um, the folks are on the floor, we're talking about budget and stuff, and, um, you know, and we might have this exercise before we get to town meeting before you adopt the budgets, but, you know, at any time we can look at things and say, you know, can we cut this, can we trim this, you know. I just want to caution people too that um, when you start trimming budgets, it's never a good thing mm -hmm. because what I've been doing over the years is trying to get, especially um, salaries, up to a competitive wage. Yeah. We're not quite there yet. Um, I can tell you there's one town near us that, you know, I don't want to poach somebody else's, you know, employees, but we have to be competitive with our salaries. Yeah. I mean, I can't even bring people in here for, you know, less than $27 an hour. I'm not, yeah. I'm not even paying some of these people here that much money. Yeah. 
So this is a challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, at any point, you know, the board can say, I'm not comfortable with this. What can we do about it? Um, <clears throat> you know, I can reduce benefits, but that's a risk that we're going to lose employees. Yep. So I'm always looking at numbers and trying to find, like, you know, the middle yeah. of the road. I mean, I, I, I'm going to just say that, I, you know, I, I trust your judgment. I, I don't want to, um, I mean, I don't want my taxes to go up. I'm a taxpayer, too. Um, but it's, you know, we can't. We have to pay our employees a living wage, and we have to give them um, competitive benefits. Um, and if we start nickel and diming employees, they will go elsewhere, right? So um, I, I don't know what the answer is other than to find other sources of revenue, which are right. limited. Um, but I think that's you know that's that's a better bet than trying to 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 strip money out of the budget. Well, I'm just hoping that the grand list comes in high. Given given the still strong market, I don't see why it wouldn't right. go up. That's my speech. Okay. Anybody else have a speech? <laughs> Anybody have a, a no, I guess okay. I think uh, the other thing, so anything that we can kind of question in advance here is helpful yes. you know it's helpful to get some of the answers yes. out some of the questions out on the table and answered so that we can defend the budget so right. that, you know um, so. yeah the yeah. only thing we won't know about until town meeting will be the articles that come in for the community service appropriation <coughs> The, yes, right. So, right. one other item, too, is I will be looking at capital planning um, and trying to put some money into the capital reserve for improvements, but I, don't, I can't tell you if that's going to happen. If it does, it'll be an article for the voters to vote on. Okay. Um, uh, in terms of the social service appropriations, mm -hmm. um, wouldn't they just be folded into the what's already budgeted for the Group B? No, no, because what change? So if they what? they would have so it depends on what they their articles say, right? So if they say we want a petition to be in Group B, then um, well, it, no, which no. It wouldn't change the it wouldn't change the appropriate the total no, appropriation. No, because they're all going to fall into B. Yeah, anyway. so it wouldn't change the total appropriation for well, that. Well, it would because we have eleven right now. Yeah, if only four come in. Isn't it a total bucket of money, and then we and yeah. then we appropriate it, then we split it between it's, what three point two percent of the budget or something two and a half. Two and a half. So two it's and two and a half percent of the budget. Yeah, it might and then work. We apportion, yeah, and then we apportion you it might out. be right. What, yeah. what might change the budget if they come in if and they, they say ask for a particular we want five thousand dollars? Right, right, right. Then that then that right. would change the budget. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, because they could ask for more money. Right. They could or do somebody that. on the floor could have mended some more money. They could, they could do that too. Right. We'll see. We will. It'll be fun and interesting. Always is. Town meeting day. <laughs> um, all right. Anything else on the budgets that we want to talk about? No? I have none. Karen, no. Karen has none. Are there any comments in the room about budgets or? Okay. Anything um, online? Uh, Swift. I just wanted to uh, on the equity inclusion budget. I haven't had a chance to open up the. Um, Karen's put it as a line item for next year, but we are in conversations on what we are going to be spending our budget on for this year. And Eileen and I have spoken a little bit, and um, Karen and I sent, Karen has sent an email, I was curious about your priorities. Um, but we are narrowing in on either a preparedness plan for uh, hiring a consultant 
for bias-related incidents or training or an event. Um, and Karen, maybe you can update me if, we're, if there is something included for next year at this point. I thought I saw a line item yeah, for equity. Yes. Level funded. There's $4,000 in the budget swept for equity inclusion. Thank you. Yeah, that's what we're looking at for this year. And um, I guess the question, and this is just putting out to you folks and Karen, I don't know what the idea is on if we wanted to like, if you ever have think about a project like, oh, this is a two-year project in banking that like you want to do an 8,000 every two years, or if that's something you think about in your budgeting, um, if we, if the committee and the board wanted to recommend something different that was a larger project that would take two years, it would be a higher budget, or is that something that, that you do with your budgets? How does that, that would be a fund that we would put money into every year, wouldn't it? Like a reserve fund? Um, if we did something to that effect? Not necessarily. So with the Planning Commission swept, so Sue's, she knows what she's going to do for the next two years. So we've already calculated, you know, how much money she's going to need in the budget to cover those expenses. Now, energy conservation has a line item. That's a fund. That is a reserve fund. Pretty well, sure. no, there's a reserve fund. Oh, there's fund a line too. item and then mm -hmm. there's a reserve yeah. fund. So yeah. I'm talking about the line item, yeah. which is like in the planning commission now. Yeah. Um, so money goes into that line item. If it doesn't get spent, it rolls into a special fund. Yeah. So if we could do something like that and build it up. Yeah, so we would create another fund. So like if you don't spend your four thousand dollars swift, we could take that four thousand, put it into a special fund, continue doing that year after year. Um, otherwise you would have to uh, so special funds can be set up by a select board. They can? Okay. Yeah. Reserve funds have to be um, voted on the floor to set it up. And then usually you just put money from the operating budget, you just transfer it into the reserve fund. But we can set up funds ourselves? Special fund. Special fund, okay. Yeah, so it's like the energy, fund. the energy yeah. has a fundraising special fund. Yes, and we did create that, yes. Yes. I remember that. Okay, yep. yeah. So, okay. And, and like the pool fundraiser, yeah. remember? Yeah. That one was a special fund, okay. so it was created by the select board. Okay. Uh, so that is something we can consider. Okay. We can talk about that more, um, Swift. Right. Sorry, I've got right here. Um, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I don't think we're necessarily asking for one or the other, but I want you to know the options. Mm -hmm. um, and it's great to have a bit of an update for on both sides. Thanks. Sure. You're welcome. All right, is there any other comments or questions online? Anybody else on the select board? Time for dinner. Um, okay, so hearing none, the next meeting date is a, on December 27th, 2023. That is a regular meeting, but um, I believe there's going to be three of us. Hopefully there'll be three of us here to make quorum. Um, so I think it's gonna be a relatively short meeting. Very. Um, <laughs> uh, does that mean we're not gonna have, B, uh, not BLCT, my gosh, BCTV um, here or? Um. So they can come. I mean, it's, oh. going, you, it's going to take you longer to set up and break down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, I'm counting on you guys to actually have the shortest meeting ever, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, all right, so. And Charlie is, is Charlie the He'll be the chair? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Unless he wants to pass it on to somebody else. Chair, vice chair, clerk. Got it. Okay, sounds fair. Um, okay, so um, so can I hear a motion to adjourn? I'd like a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 And you opposed. All right. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>